Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, today I have Verizon's 5G home internet. So this uses their millimeter wave or their ultra wideband 5G. And without getting into too many details on 5G, there are different flavors of it. This one is their fastest, most capable one that can give you upwards of a gigabit per second download. So let me open up this box, show you what's in it, and um, and then see what kind of speeds we can get. Now for reference, I have a T-Mobile 5G home internet back there as kind of a reference or a baseline. That's what I use here at home. So in this box, we have a quick setup guide that you're supposed to use the My Verizon app to set up. This is the main unit here. Awfully big, as you see. It's quite a lot bigger than that guy. And then it's designed to be mounted on a wall in our window and then pointed towards your tower. Now, with the millimeter wave, the downside to it is that it doesn't travel very far. So they have lots of smaller, um, we call them like micro cells around. And that's what you'll have to find where your local one is, the app helps you do that, and it helps you orient it, but it's very sensitive. So you don't have free reign really of where this goes because it needs to go on the side of the house or apartment or whatever that is the closest to one of these uh, 5G towers. And then you actually have to even rotate it to get it pointed there. Now it has an indicator to help you with that. And we'll, um, we'll talk about that here a little bit more in a second. All right, so here is a mounting plate, and this one is called uh, Gecko Tape, and this one is designed to go on the window. So this is something that you clean the window off, you stick that on, and then this guy can get attached. Let's see what else we got here. All right, so here is a little swivel mount. So this is what would go on to your mounting plate on your window or the wall. And then this device actually sits down inside of it like that. And then you can rotate it a few degrees either way to get the final um, aiming. All right, so then last but not least, we have some mounting accessories. We have power cable, the power brick, All right, and then these are little uh, wall screws, wall anchors, window wedges, window wipes, cable clips, cable spooler. Um, so it has lots of these little things that go in there, including you know cable management um, and little clips that you can use that use 3M tape on the back side, and it gives you some place to route that wire along the outside edge of the window along the wall so that it's not just dangling. So that's kind of uh, nice that they include that stuff. And it's kind of bad that you have to have it in the first place, I think. But um, we will set this up here in a second and figure out just what kind of speeds we think we can get. All right, so I just took it out and I plugged it into power. There's only two ports on this thing. One is the power port. The other one's an ethernet port. and um, so it's really designed to be very simple and really they're kind of expecting you to use the Wi-Fi built into this box, but uh, you can plug a computer into that or your own router into that and then have your own uh, network. And we'll hop into the settings here and see just what kind of firewall and NAT type and port forwarding, that kind of stuff that they allow on this unit. All right. so. I know that I don't get signal here, um, but I'm gonna try to go through the setup process anyways to show it, and then I will go and get the signal that's needed for this to work. And like I said, it's millimeter wave, so it's really only in dense urban areas right now. But let me um, do a screen record on my phone here so you can see what I am doing. Okay, so what you can see is I did plug this in and it's powered up and the little light is blinking blue on there which i think means it's on but it doesn't have signal 
when I open up the My Verizon app and I'm logged in with the account for this unit, there's a start your 5G home setup right there on the, um, the main page. So now I'm just clicking that. Device audio is turned on, okay. Welcome to 5G home. Please don't remove anything from the box just yet. The app will... Finally, you'll conduct a speed test to confirm your 5G internet speed. All right, so it, it gives you a little video to try to walk through. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so it wants you to pick the closest 5G antenna, and it's using your phone here to, um, you know, you give it the address of where it's at or where the service is at, and then it's picking that up and showing you where the closest 5G antennas are. And you go through here in the app, and pick which one you like okay so now what it's doing is it's trying to do a little bit of um you know um artificial reality where it's it's trying to show me which way i'm pointing uh, which is kind of funny because it's obviously not that smart so it's saying that <laughs> that is where I'm, I'm pointing but it's looking for a antenna in atlanta georgia i'm in michigan so it's just pointing due south but the idea is that this antenna um, you use your phone to help guide you where in your house you need to go to get to that antenna you can now test for a signal with your device all right so let's pair the phone okay so now it's going to pair and now it looks like it pairs over bluetooth to this and I see the blue light changed to now red light okay so now it says I'm paired and so the blue flashing light means that it was a kind of in setup mode and it's waiting for you to pair with your phone so it looks like you have to have my Verizon um, app installed on your device it doesn't necessarily have to be a Verizon phone um, to then connect and now I get a red LED which means I have no signal. Okay, so just for fun, I stood up there and pointed it around a couple different angles, uh, but I don't get signal and I'm not surprised by that. So let me go travel to where I do get signal and let's see how fast this bad boy is. All right, so it's gonna keep helping you out to set this up based off if it's a window or a wall that you found it at. Um, it's gonna show you how to clean the window off and then how to stick the the tape on there and then install it I'm obviously not doing that since I have to to travel to go get it align the holes on the mounting bracket align the hole connect the power cord into the near swivel the device so it faces the 5g antenna you found earlier you can use the 5g map to have yeah so it gives you the the little green which is where that tower that I picked but again that thing's some 700 miles away it doesn't seem to uh, to tell you that turn the lock under the bracket 90 degrees to stabilize stick the wedges to the wind what I wanted to do was see if I could still log into this and play with some of the settings so what I did is I connected to the Wi-Fi on here and it does give you the Wi-Fi and the password as well as the default IP address to log into this unit. And the administrator password's all right here on this little um, place. I'm gonna type in directly to that gateway address, which is 192.168.0.1. And then the password is written on the bottom corner of the gateway itself. All right, so now we are logged in. Um, that's all there. It tells me my Wi-Fi is on. Here's my SSID and the password. And those are default ones, and those are also listed on the bottom of the of the um, the gateway itself. It tells me my firmware, and then you can see how many clients I have, and that's in router mode. Obviously, if I had internet. Um, it would, well, this is kind of interesting. 
it says there's one bar LTE. So I wonder if it actually thinks it's connected. No, <laughs> it even beeps at me. That says it's failed. Okay, but so it's interesting that it um, it uh, is using some LTE base signal there um, to get that. Okay, so let's go in here to these. This is the local network map. These are in the settings here. This tells you I just have my one device connected and that's this desktop computer here. And before I did have it plugged in through ethernet just to test that so I must have that as history in there. Okay, so now we can go in here to some other settings. Here's the Wi-Fi settings, and this just is where you can turn off that Wi-Fi if you don't want it, for example. Um, if, for, if you're going to use your own uh, wireless router or if you have a mesh network uh, that you already have set up and you want to keep that set up, you could just plug in the main mesh one into this guy and turn off this Wi-Fi so you don't have that interference. So that would be one way uh, to do that. Let's go in here to the advanced settings and see what we can do. All right, so this just tells you it does support all the way up to Wi-Fi 6, which is AX protocol, but it can also go back and support um, all the way back to uh, G uh, as well in here. All right, so this has a few different uh, settings, airtime allocation for guest network where you can try to split kind of priority up uh, amongst them. Let's see what else. So we already did connected devices. Let's go to the firewall. So now it has two settings, a medium and high. Um, allows outgoing and blocks unknown incoming. Let's see what high does. So it blocks all incoming for Telnet, FTP, HTTP, all that stuff. So if you're you know trying to host anything, the, the high would block all of that. All right, so we'll leave that on medium that has port forwarding as an option and DMZ. So port forwarding would be something if you um, needed to set up on a kind of individual basis, you can pick specific IPs to um, forward ports. DMZ is um, where it just sends every, it basically turns off the firewall on the gateway and then it sends everything to um, this IP address and so that's what I do if I were to set this up as just a modem and have my own ASUS AI mesh system do all of the firewall all of the routing um, and um, so that's what you would do so it's nice that it has this feature that allows more advanced uh, configurations of your own hardware but this thing does have some parental control where you can uh, block certain websites and you can add devices so here's my device um, and then I can go in here and um, and block you know certain devices out uh, directly in here to prevent them from accessing the internet if I wanted to So here's some system settings. It looks like you can do backup and restore of your settings, including factory reset. And then you can also go in here to the LAN settings. All right, so this is where you're setting up the IP address of the gateway itself, turn on or off the DHCP server, as well as do um, some of this if it supports UPnP um, or not. So it has a decent number of settings in there. Let's look at some diagnostic stuff. All right, so this must be for like a, a mesh setup or something where you can um, do a speed test between them. So for me, I don't see an option that I can actually use that. Okay, so it has some settings in there. It's not too bad. Um, the number one thing I look for typically on these guys is, does it have a 
DMZ or in kind of like a pass through or bridge mode that allows me to uh, use it just as a modem and then I have my own setup that I like to run behind the scenes. That's something that the T-Mobile 5G um, home internet does not provide. So you're always stuck with it blocking all your port forwarding, all that kind of stuff. Now, there can still be issues here with getting a public IP address for a cellular based device. So that's something else we'll have to check to see if it works. All right, so I drove in my car down to Ann Arbor. I'm actually on the uh, University of Michigan campus and they have 5G ultra wideband here for Verizon. So that was my plan was to come here and test it. So I have this set up on the dash and I um, turned it on. Now, I heard that they don't allow you to move or they, you know, they tell you that you cannot move the service address uh, from where it's at without contacting them. And you know, T-Mobile tells you that too, but you can actually move their device around and it's not a problem. So I was hoping I could make that happen with this. It looks like it does actually have a, a geo lock on it. When I um, was first messing with it, I did get it to get a signal and it showed a green light up here, which uh, tells you you have a good signal, but it was not letting me um, uh, connect to the internet. And so I've been messing with it. You can see here I logged into it at the 192.168 over Wi-Fi and it shows I have uh, full bars and signal there, but it does not show that I'm connected to the internet. And if I do a speed test, it shows me that it fails. So I messed with it, I did a factory reset, I played with it, and now I just get the flashing blue light. Even my Verizon app uh, will not uh, connect to it and um, make anything happen. So best I can tell is probably geo-locked, so I'm not un uh, able to do a speed test, unfortunately. But the, the thing with this one is that you can't get service in a lot of places because they're they're very slow to roll out the 5G ultra wideband because it is so short range. They have to put lots of antennas out, out or you know, uh, sell um, uh, antennas out in an area to get it, and then it doesn't go through uh, buildings or trees and stuff like that very well. So you have to. That's why they have it up against a window. Is that you actually have to be like almost looking at one of these little antennas that's either mounted on the top of a light pole, top of a building, something like that. So, anyways, sorry I couldn't get that speed test for you guys today, but stay tuned for more on Verizon. I'm getting their 4G LTE one as well, and I'll be testing that one out. That one um, I will be able to test and get functional.